This is Chris Sullivan. I'm the account manager for Photronic Corporation and a level 2 thermographer. I'm here to talk about Fluke thermal imagers, specifically the TI series portable handheld thermal imagers. This particular model is the TI32 and we're going to be demonstrating some of the techniques used in thermal imaging and how to take um, surveys and look around and be able to see different electrical, mechanical, and structural defects that possibly might show up using the thermal imager. So there's there's the spot on the wall. Okay. And now the spot on the wall. We just poured some water down this wall so you can see the water damage streaking down the wall. It stands out pretty impressively. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this later as it dries and see what happens and you can tell a time lapse in exactly what happens to it. But this you can see any type of water damage and this would be the same on the inside of the wall. You'd see this kind of effect where it's non-linear and strained as to how the, how the water has been leaking and where the source is from. Okay, so here you can see the actual, as it calibrates, you can see the actual studs in the walls themselves because they're at a cooler temperature than the surrounding wall. And what that allows you to tell is if there's any insulation damage or missing insulation, it also allows you to see if there's any water ingress. This is a normal pattern wall and this unit self calibrates as it sees different temperature variations. Technically, the only thing you really have to change on this camera that the software can't do is the actual focus. The sharper the focus, the better the temperature range will be and the, the more accurate it will be. If you, if you see it fuzzy, your temperature starts to deviate. Once you get the object into focus, you can see a lot better. Now we'll go to something that has a heat source. And you see the unit self calibrates. And now, if it's fuzzy, you see one temperature. As you bring it more into focus, you can see exactly what the unit is and also what the temperature range it is. So, the key, key component of any thermal image picture is the focus. It's the only thing you can't change in the software itself. Menu, we'll do the IR Fusion. We do. So you have, you get the IR right in the middle. So you, you have a digital picture on the outside and you have the infrared image on the inside so you can tell exactly in the room where you are. So if you wanna see and know what this particular item is, it's a, it's a thermostat because once you go like this, you can't really tell. So that's where the picture in picture comes in handy. You can tell exactly in the room where you are and what exactly you're looking at. If you're looking at a panel, you can see on the panel itself. We can change the color palettes. We've got the rainbow palette. We've got black and white. You got grayscale. Amber. Reverse amber. Rainbow, iron bow, hot metal. And then the most the most famous is the high contrast rainbow. With multiple colors. Red being the hottest, blue being the coldest. You can definitely see where this pump is heating up and you can see if there's ever going to be any problems. When a pump's out of oil or it's making a strange noise and you might have some bearings that have gone, you can use this instrument to tell what the heat signature is and tell if something's overheating beyond manufacturer specifications.
Calibrate this. Focus it. And you can tell the exact temperature of where the heat gun was shooting on the table. Okay, and you can see the heat source on this heat gun after approximately one minute of activity. You see the body of the heat gun is at roughly at room temperature, slightly warmer, but the tip is now in excess of 140 degrees. Approaching more close to 160 degrees. So this will help you find electrical problems, shorts, grounds, anything that has an excessive heat signature is a problem and has to be investigated. Well, right now that light bulb is at a approximately 200 degrees. You do not want to be grabbing that. You can see here, five minutes later, that the water we poured upon the wall is still extremely obvious. You can still see the pattern of how it streaked down the wall all the way to where it puddled on the floor. So if you're looking for water damage behind walls or floors or on the roof, these are the types of patterns you're going to want to see. And it will lead you exactly to where the source was. Initially, the, the water came in at this point. Thank you for listening. This is Chris Sullivan, Photronic Corporation, signing off.